Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Serpent. And if you do enjoy the videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Now, the judge denies Ripple request for the SEC crypto trading disclosures. Now, this is important. We do have to talk about this, right? But it's not as bad as you guys might think. It's, there's some key things here that I want to highlight, which are really, really, really critical that we need to discuss in regards to this particular topic. Now, when this first came out, a lot of people were quick to jump the gun. However, I do want to mention the following. So yes, the judge has denied that for, for Ripple. However, despite losing the battle on individual trading logs, NetBurn's motion did reiterate that the SEC should provide Ripple with documentation confirming its recent claim that agency employees were directed to refrain from trading XRP in 2019. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is very very good news for Ripple. So again, when it comes to this stuff, you really do have to pay attention to the little details because it's quite easy to, uh, I guess, to jump to conclusions when it comes to this stuff. And so for for me, while you know we don't have the judge's full support, we do have support from her. And so that there is very, 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 very positive. Now, I just want to point out how the media talks when the prices go down. Price in free fall. Bitcoin is crashing. All of this negativity, right? Which is all designed to really, really scare the retail trader. That's all it's designed to do. Because if they can cause fear, then you take the wrong actions. If you take the wrong actions, then guess what? You make mistakes. That mistake ends up costing you quite a bit. And then all ultimately, what tends to happen is that because a retail investor is a very emotional investor, they buy at the bottom and then they drive the prices back up. But just be very mindful of these words because they are used in the media very, very commonly. Now, in regards to yesterday's price prediction about us going to 85 cents, we went to 86 cents. So there is a method to the madness or the methodology of looking at a chart and understanding a chart. It's not rocket science. It really isn't rocket science. It is all there available for you to learn. It is all there available to beat the whales at their own game. And my purpose, why I come on every night, is to provide you with my research, my feedback and my thoughts. Then you go away and do that yourself as well. And sometimes we come across to have the same opinion. But that's really, really important that you do your own. I had another person yesterday say to me, do I go for this one or that one? Like, who am I to tell you how to spend your money? I'm going to tell you what I'm researching, what I'm looking at. But nobody, you should not be taking someone's advice on, you do your own research. My my feedback to that person was just go do, go do more research because you haven't figured out which one you want more. So it's really, really important to do that. Now, the SEC could approve a Bitcoin futures ETF by October. It's actually, there are three ETFs that are coming in October. That's how bullish I am on the entire market in October. Like, it is going to be fantastic. There are three potential ETFs, one in the middle or towards the 20th of October, and then two at the end of October. The ones that two, uh, the, 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 the other two at the end of October, they could be massive for the entire industry. Like huge, absolutely huge for the, for, for the entire industry. And so the an analysts that are saying $100,000 per coin, uh, Bitcoin is coming. People like myself saying that it's coming. And just in general, right? The number one question that you guys have is, well, where's all this money coming from? It's got to come from somewhere, right? And ETFs and these three big ETFs are all part of that methodology of coming up with these price predictions. Because at the end of the day, the price goes up if more flow of money in the world comes into the crypto space. The Bitcoin just doesn't go to $100,000 per coin just by fairy dust. Real money has to come into the industry. And these ETFs are part of that. So just wanted to make sure I reiterated that because sometimes you guys get a little bit confused on that. Now, experts say that Ripple will win litigation with the SEC. I know that. You know that. But there's a couple of particular reasons why they're saying that. 
Um, but ultimately, they're talking about you know the Hinman speech. They're talking about the digital asset investor research. They're, they're talking about you know all the little details that have been going on throughout the case. And so, do do I think that we're going for a win? Hell yeah, we're going for a win. It's gonna be amazing. It's going to be phenomenal what goes on next. But again, we just want to make sure that you understand that the reason why I'm confident is because I do my own research. That is the number one reason why I am confident. I'm confident because of my research. I don't wake up in the morning and say, this is what I think, guys. It's based on research. And I really, really want you guys to understand that. Now, from where we are, and where we're going next, of course, you know, we do have a, a, a 95 cents resistance that has to be broken. But I think that the next move is almost ready. And I'll go over the, the charts in a, in, a, in a few minutes to go over what I'm talking about as far as how we hop along this line and then and then continue up. But I think we are very, very close to, to a bottom. Now, I did mention yesterday 85 cents and we hit 86 cents. I think we could be touching 85 and 86 a couple more times before we do that. But do expect that you know we hover, hover around this particular price for just a little bit longer before we break into twos and then and then go fours and all that. So just be mindful that you know this, where we are right now, we could be here for a couple more days before we continue to move and, and continue to go up. So don't expect a, a huge price increase in the next day or two or the next two or three days because I think you know we will go you know quite flat for a little bit and then and then we'll finally uh, pop off as soon as we finish this particular formation at the moment right based on today's information that's what we're looking at let's have a look in the time let's have a look at some of the indicators now as we begin to look at the charts and we're looking particularly at the moment we're looking on the daily the reason why i mentioned yesterday 85 and you know we hit 86 was because of the moving average 100 now when we did hit the moving average 100 we touched it perfectly and then we bounced straight off I thought that maybe even, you know, like we might go a little bit lower for a few moments and then and then go back up. But no, we hit the moving average 100 and then boom, we jumped up straight away. Now we are 4.5% you know, down for the day at the time of um, well, at the time of making this. It'll be interesting by the time it goes live where we're at. But that for me was a very important um, level and it turned out to be it turned out to be correct. Now since then, you know, we were outside the Bollinger Band. We've come back inside the Bollinger Band on the hourly. And we will continue to touch this a couple more times. So I think we will touch 85 again, maybe even two, three times. So again, if you missed out yesterday, you, you potentially have some more opportunities coming up because I don't think we're over just yet. On the four hour, we were into the over, oversold. So we're now we're sort of back into low volumes, low levels. But on the 12 hour, you can see, you know, we went way outside the Bollinger Band, but we did touch the moving average 50 and then we bounced off. So again, it's following support support levels very very nice very very comfortably, and that that's the most important part. It's when the, everything free falls and it doesn't and hits every level and just continues to go down. That's when you got problems. But right now where we're at and where and where we're moving looks all pretty solid, right? So following the charts accordingly, hit eighty five probably hit eighty five a couple more times, maybe two three times before before we start to rise. But let's have a look at some drawings. So one of the possible scenarios that I want to play with you right now is this one. So where we were last night, you know, hitting the 85 and then, you know, 86 and then bouncing off, you could see this. So you could see a couple of more waves in this particular field bouncing between $1 and 85, $1 and 82, you know, just going up and down, up and down, up and down, then start to rise again and continue to move forward. So I, I want to mention that because, you know, that is a, a scenario that could play out. Where we are now though, We've got resistance at 95 cents and we've got resistance at $1.05. So to break this cycle, we do have to go above 110 and stay within the 110 to 125 region to have officially broken this new support level. So that, that there is what we're looking for. The other scenario is that we are making this type of formation. So we're making this type of, um, of pattern. So that again is also something else to, to look at. I don't think so. Just wanted to mention it, but I don't think we're doing this at all, right? Because otherwise we'd be going into 50 cents territory and that's just not going to happen. And again, it's one person's opinion. The other scenario is that we could be forming this type of formation and then we will break out of it and, and then continue to, to move up. So again, all these options are things that I'm open to, that I'm looking for, that I'm, I'm analyzing. 
and we do have to be prepared for anything. So that these are the kind of moves uh, that we're looking that we're looking for in the market. Most likely scenario that I think will happen if we were to drop, then we would drop to the maximum of like seventy nine cents, and then start our way up towards breaking you know previous um, you know previous resistance levels go towards 170, 180, 190, break to 20 above and then, and then continue to go. So we're, lo we're working very, very closely at the moment at looking at this formation and looking for all these different scenarios and which one are we a part of. Again, don't be surprised if you have more opportunities at the 85 cents range. You could have as many as three more options, three more opportunities to get more accumulation at that in that range. That there is one of the most likely scenarios. Does it change anything as far as where we're going for the future and how fast we're going to get there? No, I, I still have all my predictions for the end of the year exactly the same. Now, if you did learn something new today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And as always, thank you. And I look forward to see you on the next one.